my name is Gina and today is another Tuesday Talks. I haven't done a Tuesday Talks in a while. The last one I did, I just did on the blog. So I will link that in the description below if you want to go check that out. But I really enjoyed this Tuesday Talks topic, so I thought that I would do one. Today's topic is about book covers and I'm not exactly sure the exact title of the topic, but it's essentially what draws you to beautiful, beautiful book covers. What do you find attractive in book covers? And I just love this topic because I like book covers and especially pretty book covers. Now I know that we all say, well, I don't judge a book by its cover. You know, I just read it because I want to read it. Eh, how true is that really? I mean, let's face it. Everybody picks up a book here and there because the cover draws you in. There are certain books that you just walk into the bookstore, you see it on the shelf and you think, oh my goodness, that cover is beautiful. I wonder what this book is about. Sure, you might not buy it because of the cover, you might buy it because of the synopsis, or maybe you look it up on Goodreads and you see, oh, that it has really good views. But initially, it is the cover that draws you in. The cover is the first thing that you see. And for me personally, I look at a lot of books based on the cover. If I'm walking through a bookstore and I see a book that has a questionable cover, I might pick it up to see what it's about. But if I see something that has like a gorgeous cover and it is so well done and just perfect, I will definitely pick that up to see what it is about, to see if maybe I want to read it. For me, the perfect book covers happen to be the ones that can tell you a little bit about the story before you even read the synopsis. They're just fantastic. I love book covers. Also book covers that I really like are really clean, really precise book covers, as well as really colorful book covers. I like a wide range of book covers and it depends on the book. Some covers are really white and pristine and really pretty, while others have a ton of color in them. It really depends on the book and the story. Like, if a story is kind of dark and mysterious, you don't want a white, pristine cover on it because it just doesn't match up. On the other hand, if a book is extremely colorful, you want to go into that book expecting to feel light and fluffy and expecting to have fun with it. You don't want a book that has really, really bright covers on it and then be super depressing the entire way through. There are some exceptions for that, like it could be a light fluffy book, but also have a sad ending or a sad premise to it, but still have a fun cover. I'll get to that in a minute. Other book covers that I enjoy just happen to have fantastic cover art. A lot of the times those book covers are UK editions, which you cannot find here. Luckily, you can find them on the book depository, and I am finally starting to realize how good the book depository is because I do have at least a UK edition that I have gotten from the book depository and I will be getting its sequel. Now I'm just going to kind of show you some of the book covers that I absolutely love and are just fantastic. The first one is obvious. I've talked about it so much recently and that is the UK Darker Shade of Magic. I love this book cover. Just love it. It is so nice and so clean and just amazing and I cannot wait for the UK edition of the second book. I will be getting that from the book depository. That way they can match. I just enjoy this cover a lot more than the US edition. I like the US edition because it gives you a little insight into what the story is going to be and it is nice and clean. I just, I don't know, there's something about this cover, the UK cover, that's just very intriguing and it is very mysterious and V.E. Schwab's UK covers are just gorgeous. For an example, like I was talking about colorful book covers that might not have an actual happy storyline would be Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. And also you could say The Fault in Our Stars in that too because that is really bright and peppy. But I love this book cover and I have talked about it before. It is just really colorful. Initially the cover is what drew me to this book but also because it is talked about on booktube and it is becoming a movie. But for the most part, the cover is what drew me to this book and it is just fantastic. Another cover that I really enjoy because it is cleanly done and just kind of gives you an insight to the story is the 60th anniversary edition of Fahrenheit 451. I love that there's a book on it and that the matches are sticking out of the book. I don't know, I just enjoy this cover a lot more than I did the original cover. The original cover was just kind of meh for me. It was okay. This one I absolutely adore. It is just, I love it. It is fantastic and it's just so good. Other covers that are kind of really colorful that I completely fell in love with the moment I saw them and if the more books in the series end up ever being changed I will be so upset. 
But Chris Colfer's The Land of Stories. These covers are so pretty because you've got a different color for each one, but they essentially run along the same lines. You have the gold in it. Well, in this one, it's silver. You have the metallics in them, and it's a solid color, and I really don't know if my camera's doing it justice, but these covers are so pretty. And the fourth one is going to be just as beautiful. The fourth one, the fourth one is blue, and I love blue so much. It's so beautiful. The fourth one with the blue and the purple one are definitely my favorites. They're just so gorgeous. As far as like clean, crisp covers, Lisa Genova's book covers are really, really good for that. They are pure white with just some color in the main thing. I do not have the original cover of Still Alice. I do own Left Neglected, but it is buried under some books and I really just don't feel like digging it out. So I'll, I'll put a picture up here of a collection of Lisa Genova's books. They are just so well done and just so clean and precise and just they're beautiful. They really are beautiful. As for actually buying books based on their covers, a prime example for me would be this Dead End Dating. I saw this spine and I saw the spine next to it which was the sequel which is blue and purple. These books are just so colorful. I I did buy these. They were, they were cover buys. But the books actually sound intriguing. It's kind of a vampire love story. I have not read either of them yet, but I do plan on it. But this is a pure example of a cover buy because it is just so bright and, and colorful and it was used, so it was cheap. But I, I do pick books up because of their covers, because they are beautiful. I could go on forever talking about the book covers that I love and just continue picking up books that are just so well done with their covers. <sighs> just covers are beautiful and cover artists don't get enough attention and they really should because it takes a lot to make a cover of a book phenomenal. The last thing I kind of want to talk about is this lovely series right here. The remake of the Harry Potter books. I fell in love with these covers so much. All of them are just fantastic and they all have scenes from the books in them and they're just beautiful and so well done. I love the original Harry Potter covers as well but these are just so pretty and they're soft and smooth and just so pretty. And the thing that I love the most about the new Harry Potter books is the castle. I fell in love with the castle when I first saw the design and it is just fantastic and so pretty. Just, ugh. Oh. These books were definitely a cover buy because I've already read Harry Potter. I didn't need to know what the story was. It was pure cover buy because I wanted this lovely castle on my bookshelf and it was a Christmas present so it wasn't completely me. But that is really all I have for you guys. Let me put this back. So that is really all I have for this Tuesday Talks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below, do you buy books based on covers? I know some of there are people out there that do. I definitely do on occasion. It happens. We get attached to the covers and we get drawn in because of the covers. So let me know in the comments below what some of your favorite covers are. I'd love to hear from you. As always, links to everything in the description below. Again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye!